you walking into a room that locks, a door that locks, you ain't got no key to, no nothing, with a man you never met before. When an ex-con gets released from prison, what they do in the first 90 days is critical. If they fail to get their affairs in order and find gainful employment, then nine times out of 10, they will find themselves in a cell once again. Old head in jail used to say, it's going to work because it got to work. So it ain't no choice. And I can't fail because I'm the only person that's my backup. These are their success stories. Yeah, so we just want to congratulate you on your release. Not an easy thing to achieve. When Man. did you get out? Uh, I got out June 6, 2022. Yeah, this year. I got out this year. June, summertime. Okay. This is your first time in prison? Yeah, first time upstate. Yeah. Yeah, this wasn't my first time in prison. I did a couple of uh, state run, state road runs, CFCF, PIC, uh, juvenile center, but this was my first upstate run though. How you had upstate? I lost that case. No, I had to take the deal though. Like the numbers they was talking, it was like it was crazy. You feel me? And when once everybody turned on me and started pointing the fingers and saying like you know this and the third, I was like, look, what's the lowest y'all gonna go? First they said seventeen for aggravated. I said no, nah, that's too high. Then they said ten. I said no, nah, that's too high. They said 12. I'm like, nah, they ain't going to come with nothing lower than that. Boys kept coming to me. You know how it is in the jails. Niggas come to you. Yo, bro, that's as low as they're going to go. My lawyer came back said, look, when people are talking about just take this full. I said, well, all right, I'll take that. We're going to rock out for it. Four years. Four, man. Was it hard? Hell yeah. You know what's crazy about jail? We, we could sit here all day, right, and be like, man, I'm built for this, built for that, and all this other shit, but jail fucks you up. Like, prison really fuck you up. And I think, I think as men, right, I don't know about the women's side, but I know as men, I think it's our masculine and our pride and ego. We want to feel like we were somebody accomplished something really big by going to jail and coming home. Yeah. But people don't tell you the shit that it does to you. So niggas don't want to tell you that. They rather tell you how many soups they bust. Jail was hard as shit. The hardest was your first night. The first night is the hardest, bro. How was the first night? First night is the worst. First night, when you come into a unit, like when I first came in, I was in a CFCF. I was on unit C22, right? When you first come in, they give you your roll back. I mean, your roll up and everything like that. Roll up, what's that? Your roll up, your basically your mattress, uh, your sheets. If you get it, you probably the fuck won't. Supposedly a pillow, depending on which jail you went, but that shit don't always go that way either. So basically, a roll up is your essentials, like that the jail feels as though you need. You know what I'm saying? Not what a real person would really need to move into a place, but that's what they give you. But when you hit a unit, you got your roll up, and you come to the block. That shit is mind boggling. All you see is a bunch of faces inside these little ass boxes. You feel I me? Mean? It's like it's like figurines. You know, like them old figurines you see or them antiques. And they put them in a glass box. And once they put them in a little glass box, you can come in and just look at it anytime you want. That's like prison. When you come on a unit, you just seeing a bunch of little toys that the state is playing with and putting them in these little boxes. That's it. When I came in a unit, I go up to my cell. I was on top tier. Top tier, second, it's two tiers, depending on which jail you in. Usually in states, two tiers. I'm on top tier, I go in my cell. You walking into a room that locks, a door that locks, you ain't got no key to, no nothing with a man you never met before. Don't know why he here yet. Don't know what's going on. He could be a freak. He could be all that shit. You don't know what's going on. Kid toucher, all that. Like it's, you don't know it's a complete stranger in front of you, you feel me? And they don't, these people are expecting you to just go in this room, make up this bed at this weird ass time of night and then go to sleep around this motherfucker? No, you can't. Your mind is boggling. Wow. Yeah. And depending on which unit you go to, shit, it could be all night thing. Screaming, hollering, all that. That should be real. Dudes banging. They trying to rap on the door, get a get a music deal or something. This that should be real, man. And you don't know what's coming for you. That's why I say the first night is the hardest. You don't know what's coming on the other side of that door. You come usually at night. 
So when you wake up in the morning and then them doors pop and you realize, damn, that quiet or subtlety that was there, that shit don't exist no more. Because now you hear pop, 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 pop. You hear that. Or you hear the key turn or the slot doors just sliding open. Now you hear all these voices. You hear all these feet moving. You hear all this just commotion, basically. You get what I'm saying? That shit, you, it shit, like, that shit wakes you up. That shit gets your heart pumping. And you don't even know why you pump. Yeah. You ain't did shit to nobody in this joint. You just pump. You just, it's, it's, it just puts you in a bad headspace, which is what it's designed to do. It puts you in a bad headspace. Then you do more dumb shit. It's a, it's a game, bro. That's why I used to tell them motherfuckers upstate, man. This is the Matrix. I got five more years to walk off. On probation. Okay. Three of them belong to the state and two of them belong. It's like, uh, what is it? Special probation, but it's three years to the state and then two years I got to give, I believe, to the city. Shit, I don't know. I'm just still on probation. It's, I just know it's that. You think you're going to succeed? Oh, I know. It got to work. It got to work. As a matter of fact, I'm going to say this. Old head in jail used to say it's going to work because it got to work. So it ain't no choice. And I can't fail because I'm the only person that's my backup. So I can't fail. If I fail, I can't look back and be like, damn, I need help from who? Another struggling motherfucker? So, oh, no, nah, it's going to work. I'm going to walk parole off. Right? Like I'm doing right now gladly. And I'm doing it straight. I'm dodging everything. I just thought about it. Be smarter. It's ways for us to live. We ain't got to try to, you know, go around shit. My parole officer said, hey, listen, you smoke? I said, yeah, I smoke. She said, well, I can't have that. I said, well, you can now. Give me my marijuana card. What did you miss the most about being free? I think the most I missed about being free was just the ability to just do as I want. You feel me? You miss everything to be for real, for real. You, you really start to see the things you took for granted, to be honest. I just miss the smallest of things that, you know, er, that we, we basically took off for granted, like I'm saying. But I'm going to say for the most, besides the, the materialistic things, I miss just being a dad. That was my big thing. I miss being a dad. I miss seeing, you know what I'm saying? I got four little ones, so I used to miss that. And then when I went away, my youngest, she was only 11 months old. So, you know, when I came home, she was just a full grown going into a five year old. Like I missed everything, but I ain't miss a beat because when I was in jail, you know, since I missed it so much, I did everything I could to make sure, you know, we had our relationship. It worked out, but you miss everything, man. I miss take washing my ass in a real shower. Shit, for real. For real. They real Hell no, they ain't no real showers in jail. Listen, when you come in, the shit either too cold or too damn hot. So that shit burn you off for real, for real. Then, on top of that, you got to be careful. That shower ain't no real shower. You know what a real shower. You want to exfoliate. You want to clean that body up. And then, depending on what jail you in, you might be in a joint where, shit, you, you about five, six deep in a joint. You feel me? Door locked. This is y'all. Spouts on the wall. That shit trafe. Or you might get joints where it's though. You know, in certain jails, you may get the single shower by yourself in the stall, but you still got a shower after this other man and all that. You get fungus and all that. From the, shower. From the showers. Dudes pissing there. They jizz in there. You know what jizz is. Them dudes be letting loose in that joint like they ain't got a cell. They be pissing in there. Listen, I done had occasions where boys just so thrown off from just being in there. And it's not institutionalized. They just throw. You feel me? They done shit it in the showers. Like, just left clumps of just shit in that joint, you feel me? And it's like, uh, it's the life they living, man. Well, on that note, those are the two worst things about being locked up. One for me was the control. It ain't even about me being submissive to the situation. It was just like the feeling of that authority being pushed upon me. Like, it's being forced on me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. I know when society says they can't do enough and we get it, we get locked up, we go to jail and everything that, you know, it's for us to get corrected. But they know it like we know it, it ain't no secret. That shit ain't no correcting in there. They just want to control you and get the money off you. So the control was the big thing for me telling me when to eat, 
telling me when I could go ahead and shower, telling me, shit, I done had motherfuckers telling me in the middle of a phone call with my children, yo, it's time for you to get up off that phone. You telling me when I could fucking talk? You telling me when I could do this and then expecting men not to snap out? Yeah, nah, nah. So control was the hardest. And two was just the natural survival of that job. You don't know. Like, you don't know. So it's like, it's the mental survival of, of, of prison that fucks you up. You don't know. You never know what's happening. Every day you wake up, just because yesterday was cool, don't mean the day is. And you never know. Thousands and thousands of men compiled onto each other. Women, too. Don't get it fucked up. The women jails, too. They compile. Everybody just placed on top of each other and shit like this. I'm a style. And then you expecting all these people to just get along. So I think, yeah, so I would say it's the control and the not knowing. You feel me? Like, if this big bath, this the beyond part, motherfucker. We don't know what's going on tomorrow. We don't know what's happening. What you dream about while you slept in there? <laughs> Shit, I ain't sleep. <laughs> I ain't sleep. Yo, listen, I, can, I, I bet everything I got in my pockets, everything in my account, you meet anybody that was from upstate. Yo, what did you dream about when you slept, right? They'll tell you. Bro, you ain't getting no sleep up in there. You think you sleep. You may go into a slight nap. You may not even a nap because you're still hearing everything. And due to the fact that you're alert, your, your, your awareness is so up, right? Like if you ain't have no social awareness before prison, you damn sure have it when you go. Your shit will be on point. I'm talking about you got dog ears. So sleeping, I, I really didn't dream about much. Now, the times that I did have a, a well enough rest, whereas though my mind could leave this place, only time, only thing that really came to mind was like, what I'm gonna do next? And not in here, not, oh, what I'm gonna do next? Am I gonna go to child? Oh, am I gonna go chill with my man on the yard? No, listen, I love, the ones I love, I love, but I ain't got time to be doing that because this is not my house. So I dreamt about what I'm gonna do when I get out. And everything I dreamt about, I wrote it down. Just so I know I could be ready. Because it ain't coming to me for nothing. Sleep. Too many people. I seen my father's side. So, <clears throat> it bothers me. You know, the older now. When I first came in, I was 26 when I came in. I wasn't, it didn't bother me to see family members and friends. But, you know, over time, if... You doing what you supposed to while you in there, it hit you. I met a, I seen a lot of people I knew that I don't think it should have been in that joint. Like, I don't think, let me say this. I don't think they belong in there. And I don't think that's how we should have met. I met a lot of people that was uncles, close friends to my father's side of the family. I met cousins that I've only heard of their names, thought they died, but come to find out these men been in here this whole time. They done lost their goddamn mind, so they don't even call home because they don't even know nobody. And then the people they did know, they don't know because they owe this shit or they fucking did. So they become just lost. And I met a bunch of them while I was in jail. I met a couple of boys I knew from middle school and elementary too, which was wild. But you meet you, you you bound to run across somebody in jail. The only thing is, is that the person you know in jail? You get what I'm saying? Like I met boys that I knew. I swore up and down, I knew them guys from elementary, middle, you know what I'm saying? Even from around the way, just years. Then when we got to jail, the, the person that I knew outside ain't the person I knew in there. Like, that was something different. What was the craziest thing you saw in there? Craziest John. Damn, it was a lot. You see a lot of shit in jail, like, we always joke in that joint, right? When you upstate, they always, everybody always joke when you go upstate, like, bro, if you take these cameras and really broadcast them, we'll make millions. Like the shit you say. I ain't gonna say nobody names though. That ain't my character, right? But for cats who know, who know they know, right? So I'm in the county and it's this big Puerto Rican bull. So the poppies, they had this little table or whatever like that, set like five chairs and they had a little uh, domino spot. So the big poppy boy, I guess he was like, uh, he conducted the, the basically the running around for the top poppy boy. He must have gotten to some shit with the wrong niggas. 
point blank. He got into some of the wrong niggas, and these wasn't your average just, oh, we gonna bang you the fuck out, we gonna beat you the fuck up. No, no, these was booty warriors. Like, these niggas was warriors, you feel me? Like, they was, they was pent up aggression, all that type dudes. So, for those who don't know, some people, they come down on writ. That's basically when you catch another case or you got a case going on, you got something legal going on upstate, and they basically got to transfer the state inmate back down so you could go to court and they keep you around the white. They keep you on the blocks and units sometimes. A couple of dudes came down from upstate. They knew these warriors, these booty warriors. They knew them. So we're getting around or whatever like that. Like, yo, listen, Poppy Boy, he got disrespectful. And then those who know, they know in jail, disrespect can end, end everything for you, for real, for real. So Poppy Boy, they like, um, he, he basically said too much than he was supposed to or did something too much. Point blank, boy said, listen, I'm in a line behind him. Two dudes behind him. We getting our chow in the morning. Walking line, normal morning. The nigga says, man, we going to kill him. He said, nah, I don't want to kill him. He said, I'm going to kill that ass, though. They laughing about the shit like this is what they do. Now, listen, this is in a county. We ain't even upstate. This is the county. These are dudes who, honestly, they either got like county bids or they fighting to find out if they about to go away for a long time. So they not even really time they doing time like it's not even like that. Don't let them cap you. Those dudes be in there and like they about to either go home or not. Like, but you may meet the ones who already know. Like, listen, this is it for me. Like, I'm get mine. So, boy said, listen, I'm a. He said, I'm a. He said, I'm gonna kill that ass. He said, I'm gonna tear that. So they laughing or whatever. Some time go by, we get day room. Day room is when they let you out your cells and your pies, whatever they call it and shit like that at your jail. But that's when they let dudes out and you basically could do whatever little activities you can, right? Usually that's when we just run amok, but whatever. The nigga, the poppy bull, he slid off into the showers. Now they got four showers. If this wall was like the four showers, you got boom, boom, and then bottom, boom, boom. So there's two over top, two at the bottom. Poppy Bull is down at the one at the bottom. The line was too long. They tell him, yo, come on upstairs. This is the old heads from upstate who was cool with him. Yo, come on upstairs. We got a shower up here, man. That shit open. Poppy Bull not thinking nothing of it. He goes upstairs. So when he goes upstairs, he goes into the shower. It was murder she wrote after that. You can hear it. He, the last real thing you heard was, I don't give a fuck. Y'all better not put your hands on me. And then it went to a loud scuffle. And then you know that sound, that doo -doo -doo -doo, like you can hear that. Brrr, all that shit start going down. When that start going down, it got real quiet. So I said, yo, I got to get out of jail. <laughs> <That's wrong. laughs> it's the craziest shit ever. These are grown men. This is how crazy this shit is. These are grown ass men. These are these are dudes who got kids out there, families. They some of these dudes even got ladies. You feel me? And then they do all this crazy stuff. And then and then when I question this, say something about it to a guy, they say, "Yo, bro, like this shit don't matter. Like we in here, like it's a different set of rules." I said, "Oh, yeah, that shit that shit real, man. Yeah." So did you have any problems in there? I see you. You a big guy, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm six foot. 250. You had any problems with it? Hell yeah. Yo, your size don't mean shit in jail. Like, it look good. It can look good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you may get some people that might, you know, back up just because somebody's size, but for real, for real, nah, you gonna get tested. I seen some of the biggest niggas get bent. You feel me? So it don't, my size didn't matter. It's the respect that kept me cool. Like, I gave off what people gave me. And when problems did come out, like I never gave niggas problems in there, but those who know who was there, niggas who was upstate from Camp Hill to uh, Phoenix to when I was on J unit, oh, they, I never bought you problems, but niggas who did, they all know what happened. They know what it was. I had a few jumps, but you know what they say about prison though? You don't really run into much upstate. The county, yeah, you running the shit like crazy. You running the shit upstate too, but it's more tough guys don't test tough guys. They just unheard of because tough guys know that this shit going to go to somebody getting killed. Like somebody going to get murdered up in this motherfucker if it go too far. Yeah. So that's why I like to tell people like I, 
when I came home, motherfuckers was like, yo, jail crazy. I said, it's crazy, but it's one of the most respectable places I ever been. The respect level on that shit is like immaculate, nigga. It's, it's ridiculous. You feel me? Yeah. But you run into shit. You definitely run into shit. I had a motherfucker smack a tray out my hand. How you handle that? It got handled. <laughs> oh no, no, listen, listen. Listen, I tell you this though, I definitely, I definitely was sick because that inmate account got hit. When they started charging motherfuckers for people medicals, <laughs> yeah, I kind of chilled on that, that that shit get handled and I just started moving like differently. Okay. But that's also when I came in the job, I was so frustrated. I was just moving like an animal. I couldn't even function straight. So what kept you from losing your mind in there? No, when I ain't, I ain't gonna be here forever. Real shit. Like what the fuck? I seen dudes lose their mind with a two to four in the cell with a nigga who got a sixty to a hundred and something years, and that nigga smiling. He like, listen, I know I'm in a fucked up spot, but shit, listen, I woke up today, and that's how I had to keep it. You feel me? That shit kept me going. Where it was like, one day I had to really sit back. I was coming out the hole actually. I just did a, uh, I just did a 15 day stint in the hole. This was up Camp Hill. Now as I'm walking back down to John, dudes that I knew who worked in a, uh, the barbershop or in the library, yeah. lifers. I'm talking about niggas in there. It was one boy they call Owl, white boy. He worked in the library. Damn near ran it and shit. You feel me? This dude got three life sentences. Three, bro. And he smiled every time I seen him. I thought he was on some shit. But he was like, he made peace with it. You can't let this shit get to you. So if I do like that, who know he never going to kiss ground again, knowing he ain't never going to get no pussy, no real money, he going to be in there still trading summer sausages and soups and motherfucking rice. He, all of the shit that's going to be against him. Tuck your shirt in, take this off. Da, 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 da. You still got to put request slips in just to go read a book. Maybe not that nigga because he worked it. But even with all that, I'm saying the more the, the, the point was he was smiling. You feel me? And I said, damn. All right, cool. Fuck it. If he ain't if he ain't crying, I ain't crying. If he ain't hurting, I ain't hurting. Fuck that. I, I'll be damned. So that shit got me through it. And then just knowing, like, bro, you got something after this. You're gonna be a new new person when you leave this joint. Yeah. Ain't no ain't no if ands or buts about it. Some things about you gonna stay, but some shit gonna change. You gonna be a whole new person. You know what the old head told me? This was actually my uncle, my uncle Blue. You feel me? My uncle Blue said to me, he said, "Look, if you get caught up in this this place, your mind's gonna go. If your mind go, the body gonna go. If the body go, you fuck." And I was like, damn. All right, bet. So you just start getting your shit together in that joint. That's it, push me. You had any uh, fears, concern, re entry, like when you got out? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a lot, because I think one of my big ones was like, how was I going to provide financially with this stripe on my back? You know, like you hear all the stories. Yeah, I couldn't get this because I was a felon. I couldn't do this, you know, I'm a felon, man, and they just giving me a hard time, which is true, which is true. Cause I didn't hear more no's before I heard yes in this motherfucker. I'm gonna tell you now, like my lady is my witness, you feel me? That, that fear I had in the prisons about not succeeding, it bothered me to the point where it was like eating at me. You feel me? That was the biggest fear. You're not going to get it right. That's going to hold you back every time. And then the moment I came home and I started getting them rejections, that shit got, that monster, it got fed. It started getting bigger and bigger because I heard that voice. I heard that, I told you it was going to go this way. Like the, the pessimistic mindset just got big for me. Yeah. And you know what's crazy? I, I said another fear I had. I had a fear that me and my kids wasn't going to click. Okay. I had that fear. Because I was going for so long. Now, granted, we did virtual visits. We did the pictures. And we wrote all the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that was cool and everything. Yeah. But it's still not the connection. You feel me? Yeah, no, I was actually going 
be to actually out with them. Exactly. You don't know. We can sit there and ponder all day and, and, and just try to. That was a big fear because now I'm coming home not to a child. I'm coming home to a young lady. I got to give her her proper dues, too. I'm coming home to that. It ain't no dad. Can I have a juice or a dollar? It's dad. I need ten dollars. I need me a chime account. I need a cash yet. This boy I like, like it's like sheesh. But yeah, that that shit that was the biggest fears for me. Whew. How it worked out for you as far as your fears versus how stuff turned out this far? Like reality? Yeah. Complete opposite. But it happened. It happened, but you worked through it. You worked right through it. I told myself, right, when I was when I came home, I said, yo, when I was in jail, the same way I woke myself up, the same way I got on this, same way I told myself I'm going to do this and do that, and I did it. I told myself once I hit the streets, I don't give a fuck how many no's come. If I ain't let a no in jail stop me, or if I ain't let a no in the street stop me, why I'm going to do it now? You get what I'm saying? I'm still going to be the same person. So when the no came and kept coming, no, nah, we don't want you. No, nah, you need to have been home for about seven years. No, nah, you need to be home for 10 years, 15 years. No, nah, we can't hire you. I'm talking about down to the smallest of shit. And you like, damn, I just want to provide. Once all them joints started happening, I told myself, bro, keep trucking. I told my lady son that I keep telling my kids, my folks, everybody. I told him when I was in jail, once the train leaves the station, that's me leaving that jail. This bitch is moving. Either jump on or get ran over. And that's how I treated all the news. I ran them shits over, got a crib. Went from there, said, damn, we need a car. We got a car. Now I'm in a position after hearing all them news, I'm about to work for Scepter. <laughs> a Scepter. You get what I'm saying? That's the job when niggas was in the hood. You be like, bro, to make it out this joint, bro, you got to get that job, bro. Right. If we want to make it out this bitch, you got to get that job, bro. You've been out for how many months? Seven months now. June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Seven months home, bro. I just had a gig before this scepter shit. So it ain't, I, I never want to say for all the dudes who, who come at home, dudes who even at home, if they feel like they can't get nothing right, like, bro, you got to slow down. Because a lot of the times we be feeling like we need to be, we need to be at this certain level at this certain time frame, whereas though the people around us didn't even get to where they at in that time frame. Right, right, right. So how the hell we expect us to be there? I've been home seven months. I can't be on the level my mom's on. Right. My folks, my brother. You feel me? While I was away, boy got a CDL. He went and did this. So I can't expect to come home and be like, damn, I want a Hellcat too. Right. Damn, I want me a, a Porsche. Nigga. Nah, that ain't how this works. You got to start from the bottom again. Uncle Blue told me in prison, yo, you go home, you a newborn baby. You a newborn child. But ain't nobody going to keep raising that child. So what you going to do? Well, all right, bet. Get your license. Shit, I tell niggas all the time, get your license. They may, we may have got a felony, but if we got the right credentials, we talk the right way, we handle that the right way, we go about it, show that. Bro, like I said, bro. And I'll put this in the air. Scepter just told me no five times before this. You a felon. You got a felon. You a record. You a criminal. Da, 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 da. You need to be home for at least 15 to 20 years from the date when you was arrested. Now I'm working. Seven months later. Seven months later. And that's in the beginning. I went to every job fair, every, every joint you could think of. Job fair after job fair. Meeting people here, emailing them late night, texting them, going all this. Did the airport shit. Airport, I even got as far as going to the classes, taking the test, passing the test. My lady is my witness. Just for them to get me to the point where I was supposed to come up to the, uh, to the airport, get my badge and all that. Lady said, yeah, you can't get in the computer system. Why? So I don't know. I don't work there. She said, oh, you know what? You a felon. I said, miss, I've been staying up late night, fucking going into my temp job dead because y'all told me y'all was going to hire me. She said, oh, no, we can hire you as a felon. Well, uh, as a felon. I said, so what's the problem? You have to be home for 17 years. Yeah, you take care of yourself. 
All these no's. And I get why dudes, I used to say it all the time. I get why dudes revert back. I get it. I can understand it's a game. But how smart is you? Or not even your, not even your intelligent part, but how much willpower do you have? How much of your own willpower do you have to say, oh, my God, this is going to kill me if I go back? Now I'm going to jail. No, this shit going to kill me, nigga, if I go back. They going to murder me, mama. They, if I get out on these streets, them boys going to come get me. No, nah, I'm good. If you revert back to it, I don't care if you go back to saying something small like, bro, I'm just going to sell me, you know, a couple pills here. And there. Nigga, you're going to jail. Mama is my witness. I swear. I tell Larry, homie. Every homie I know, no names, but every homie I know that chopped it back up and went back in that shit, bro, I tell him, you going to jail, bro. I just had to tell my man no names on it. I just had to tell a homie of mine, if you see this, you know. He called me. He said, bro, what's up? You doing good? I said, yeah, I'm doing all right right now. Me and my lady, we, 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 we grinding right now. We on ours. He talking about, damn, you don't even fuck with me no more. I said, what you mean? I call you all the time. Text you every day. How you doing? I love you and all that. What's up, bro? Even when we get off the phone, I love you. You know what I'm saying? Be safe. Nah, bro, you know I got, you know I got the, peel, the pills and the weed, though. Oh, okay. Fuck that, man. Listen, I love you so much, bro, that I'm not going to support you. That's how much I love you, nigga. I love you so motherfucking much that I'm going to say, fuck out of here. I ain't giving you shit. You tell my nah, that ain't love. Yes, it is, bro. You just was in the same place as me, same unit and all that shit. You know what it's here for. What keep you going, bro, is this shit. You want something. Now I can sit here right now, bro, honestly, on this. Me and my lady chill. Me and my kids is chill. My folks, we good. Besides the normal shit that come in life. But it, you got to take your time. You got to take your time. It may seem like you ain't even doing shit some days, but that's you doing shit. That's you rebooting. Right. Nigga, you ain't been in the streets. You don't know what the fuck is going on. You, got, you probably still think you normal. You ain't normal. You fucked up. You fucked up. We all fucked up. Come out of this. So when you're not doing nothing, you're doing something. You're relaxing. You're trying to get your mind uh, reacclimated to being out here. That's 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 you're still doing some shit. As long as your fingers working, you on that joint filling out them jobs and shit. You doing something. Take your time. The shit gonna come. And you see what happened to the bulls who don't. Yep. Nah, still. You in your spot? Got your car? Your job? Family life good. How you feel? You out. Yo. You, you ever feel like you out? You know you out. I can touch this shit. No, I'm out. I can pick this shit up. I know I'm out. But I'm still there, look. My mannerisms, certain things, certain minds, certain ways. You know what I mean? Just, just all around the board, I'm still there. I catch myself from time to time, even like, Comparing shit to still prison, right? And even dealing with people. My last job I just had. It been scenarios where I was in that joint where I was, hold up, bro. And then I had to catch myself. I would call, talk to somebody I know, and they'd be like, yo, bro, you're not in jail no more. But it feels so good, but then it's also that that confliction because you want to enjoy it as much as you can. I'm talking about to the next level, enjoy it. But then you still got that strain in you that's holding you back because you don't, you know what I mean? You still a little timid because you still resistant from being in prison. It's going to pass, but because I can feel mine's passing over time. My lady is my witness to tell you when I came home, no, nah, fuck that. Everything was strictly. I still was showering with the shower shoes. But it's starting to feel like I could breathe. Because now there was days where we could walk around downtown. We walk anywhere. We'd be just outside. And I'd just stop and just <sighs> like, yo, you know, I'm really free. Like, I'm really out here. Like, I'm really free, bro. Like, but a lot of people don't be getting it, though. You feel me? They don't be digging it. They'll be sitting there like conversation could be about cows jumping over the moon. And I'll be sitting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. All right. Big Dipper and all this stuff. Yo, you know I'm really free. <laughs> like I'm really the like I'm standing in front of you. Something that used to be 15 minute phone calls with your folks is now right. damn near endless. Them conversations and the meetups, them visits that was only about three hours, four hours, they limitless now. I mean, granted, I ain't standing nobody. I ain't got time for that shit. And I don't want a motherfucker here to go on me. But 
I have the, I have the power now in my life to say, I want to go see my family. Yeah. I want to go see my folk, my mans, my homies. Me and my lady won't go out. So it feels free because you can just right now, I can fucking go and just grab my keys and just go about my business. Simple. But then some days you go, oh my God, don't let me be driving and these motherfuckers get behind me because then all I hear is the gate slamming. And then the nerve of having a parole officer, that shit keeps that ties to you like, yo, you know, I'm still locked up. That shit burns you, yeah? Motherfucker coming to see you every whatever your time frame is. Coming to my home, questioning me and shit like that. Just saying, there's like a hearing examiner every goddamn two weeks or something. You feel like, come on, man. And you know, it's, it's fucked up because we lack a lot of the constitutional rights. I damn sure don't be feeling free all the time. Because, listen, let's be for real here. Philly, dangerous as shit. This is bombs over Baghdad. We in Philadelphia. We didn't have more murders than the army did overseas. More deaths, I'm going to say that. We had more deaths than they had the last, what the fuck is that? The last when they sent them out, right? The last tour, the last tour yeah. We had more deaths in this city. And you telling me you're going to take me, a man that has just been away for all these years, Put me out here with niggas walking around with masks on and all this stuff and think that I'm supposed to be okay, but y'all took the rights from me to protect myself. So it's like y'all sending me to the slaughterhouse. Y'all know this shit dangerous. So that puts me back in that box of not feeling free. That puts me back in there. Not because I want a gun to be cool or I need it or whatever, but it's like, come on, fire with fire. This shit is dangerous out here. So the more restrictions you got on ourselves, those be the things too. I be hearing my lady, my family, they all, yeah, we gonna take a trip here and there. Oh, yeah, let me ask for permission first and I gotta see. Yeah, I'm not free like that. But it can be. Just walk the door. You talk about freedom. What's the biggest change you noticed since the last time we was out here? <laughs> Everything. Yo, the whole city is different. The people are different. Listen, when I left, people wore sneakers, boots. I came home, everybody wearing Crocs. Everybody and their mama got Crocs on. I ain't understand. Everybody shaking their hips and they got Crocs. It's, it's wild. When I came back, stores that was once there, no longer there. Places that was like, oh man. I told my lady when I came home, yo, listen, it was places I wanted to go. I wanted to see this, this, and that. Oh, baby, that ain't there no more. What? No, nah, the pandemic hit. This ain't there. This ain't that. Freedom just wasn't like, it wasn't the same. I had to remake freedom. Like, basically, I had to make me remake my reality. So that shit was like, eh, that was one of the big joints. But it was beautiful to know that I can do it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, all right, fuck it. It ain't there no more. We ain't got checkers. We ain't got it no more. But we're going we gonna to figure this shit out. So it's just rebooting your whole reality. Like, what the fuck? Like, this joint is wild. Nothing was the same. Friends that was friends, they ain't them. Dudes who was once up, they down, down. You know how life is. Life is that roller coaster, bro. That shit go up and down. And that's how it was when I came home. But I already had the roller coaster mindset. Right. It's like once you get up to that click, 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 your stomach drop. That click is that high point. That's when they, you know what I mean? Reality about to kick in. <sighs> you don't know what's about to happen on that drop. You don't know what's going down, but that's life. So, you got anything else that you're working on other than your, your jobs? Any jobs? Yeah. So, me and my lady, we got this, uh, it's called Wan Wan Juice. And um, it's an alcoholic beverage. Some of them are non alcoholic. It's natural juice, you know what I'm saying? Natural flavors and everything like that. Different flavors tequila, bourbon, you know, uh, vodka. So we got that going on and stuff, and we're just rebuilding. Right now, we're in the stages of trying to figure out uh, promotion-wise, okay. you know? But we got the Wan Wan Juice going off, and then my lady, she got her thing with her lashes and her cosmetics and everything like that. So pretty much hands full. Yeah. And then once, like I said, man, once these gigs kick in in two weeks, it's really about to be a marathon. Oh, and also on top of that, I got the music. Where can they find you at with that? They can find me everywhere. Apple Music, OGSB, 506, 
anything under red money, Instagram. They can find me on uh my own Instagram, uh OGSB underscore 506. They can find me on there. And basically I'm just working on content. Okay. You know, content is key. Cause I, you know, ain't nobody really trying to be working for nobody forever, man. Nobody trying to be doing that. So you're just trying to create your own wave. Yeah. But I'm damn sure gonna use these benefits. I'm gonna get the money out of them. And then I'm gonna go ahead and branch off the mines. But slow and steady. So last thing, if you could give your younger self any advice, what would it be? Put that shit down. Put that shit back. Leave it. Don't touch that shit. Don't do it. That shit ain't yours. Don't go up in the motherfuckers' cribs. Don't be doing that to them people. The, hey, listen. Leave that shit alone. <laughs> Real rap. If I can see younger me right now, if I can listen, if I can see younger me about to jump into them Johnnies and shit, I can catch me at any one of those moments. I will come and beat me the fuck up. Nigga, you got to chill. But on a serious tip, not only would I tell them younger me to chill, I really conflict because I don't know. Because me going through all of that shit has made me this. You feel me? If I'd have told who I was and how things was going around me to be more calm, I probably wouldn't have made I probably would have died. I would have been the victim. You feel me? I take this though. I would tell younger me be more mindful. Just be a little bit more mindful because this shit going to get real when you get old. But I wouldn't really tell me to stop because now I'm more grateful for everything. I'm grateful. I'm wiser. I'm more appreciative of everything. I'm so appreciative. I'm to the point. My lady, I swear for God, yo, listen, she'll tell you, stop saying thank you. You say it too much. Stop saying thank you. Shit, listen, man. You gonna be sick when I don't say it. You know what I mean? But no, nah, man. I'm more. I see. I see the bigger picture now. So I would tell younger me like, "Yo, this shit gonna pay out, but it's gonna be rough." Man, you pick your poison, but be mindful though, because this shit includes everybody. I ain't know that back then. Like how many people it affect. I figured me being me. And doing the stuff that I do, that's just me. You ain't outside with me, but that shit trickles back at every time. You feel me? Well, people might have more questions they want to know, so make sure you stay in touch. Oh, yeah, man. What's going on. Yeah. Listen, and if the people know anybody that got a little truck driving, transportation, delivery joint, non-CDL, let them, you know, come holler at me, man. Throw it my way. I, that's, that's the main goal. I'm trying not to be working with people. Except it too, but it got to be something I can just do on the side. I'm going to keep myself. What's your Instagram again so they know? Oh, OGSB underscore 506. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This one of them Jones. It's just the beginning, the start of the mission, the journey, the winning, the cycle was ending. I'm free, I'm free. It feel like a dream. Pinch me, pinch me. I gotta stay woke, survive my parole. Eyes on the gold, mode on gold. My answer is no to your guns and your dope. That ain't looking out, that's my neck in the rope. Oh, hanging myself, that's playing my. So, what are you doing now? So, now, uh, it's been about a month since I've been home. And I'm currently doing my laundry right now. Mm-hmm. A lot of the stuff that. You know, you took for granted or you didn't do when you was home at one point. I mean, I did do my laundry before, but the stuff now you just got to get reacclimated and back doing again and stuff like that as far as laundry, cooking for yourself, cleaning for yourself. You just want to try to get in the process of being mentally, you know, self-sufficient. And that's technically what I'm doing now. Every day, something different where I start off trying to get myself back into the groove of who I was and shit. And to some, it's like, damn, he just doing laundry, but if you do all them years in prison, trust me, it just ain't just laundry. This is like actually, it's like therapy, you feel me? It's something that 
many out here who weren't in our position take for granted. And we just used to say in jail, damn, I can't wait. What I want to do, and you say little shit. Or I just want to take a walk. You know, nigga, I just want to do some laundry. My laundry. No nigga touching your drawers. No motherfucker touching your shit. You, you yourself. Ain't stopping for nothing. Sess in my veins. If you think that you or someone you know would like to be featured on an upcoming episode of Surviving Parole, please have them send us a message on Instagram at Surviving Parole or YouTube at Surviving Parole.